Today we're looking at converting JPEG images to lossless formats, either TIFF or DNG. These are some comparison tests comparing Denoise AI, Gigapixel AI, and Sharpen AI. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I know you don't see my face too often, but I wanted to show you my face today because I wanted to talk to you for a little bit and I think it's a little more intimate when I do it this way. Recently, I've been having some issues when I've been making my uh, YouTube tutorials when I'm running Photoshop. Last week, I did some videos on neural filters in Photoshop and every time I click neural filter, Photoshop would crash on me, so I thought, what am I going to do now? I haven't upgraded to the Big Sur uh, operating system because I knew some of the uh, Topaz software wouldn't work on it, namely uh, JPEG to RAW AI as well as... Um, Adjust AI. So I thought, no, nah, I don't want to update because I still make videos on that stuff, okay? So I thought I need to do something now because I can't use my, I can't use Photoshop. So here's what I did. I said, I'm going to make the plunge and upgrade to Big Sur. So I did that. And now I thought, well, now I can't use JPEG to raw AI anymore. And I use that a lot because I like to take uh, stock images and then edit those and to get good aggressive edits on those when I'm making my uh, my YouTube tutorials, I need to uh, convert those to like TIFF files and now I can no longer do that. So I needed to find a workaround and that's what this video is all about, a workaround. And then there's times where I just want to take some old JPEG images or phone images or whatever and up convert those into TIFF files so I can do some really aggressive editing on those, okay? And I recently did a tutorial on how to take your iPhone images that are either shot in JPEG or HEIC or any camera phone image that was shot in JPEG and up convert those into TIFF or RAW, which are very great lossless uh, formats. And so... I need the capability to take JPEGs and turn them into TIFF files. And I'm like, how can I do this? And I've had some comments and I appreciate all your comments and questions on my channel. I really take, I really look at all of them and read them all and try to answer them the best I can. And some folks have been saying, you know what? You can also use uh, denoise to upconvert your image. And I think other people have said you can use Sharpen to upconvert your image to TIFF. And I'm like, hmm, I never really thought of that. So today, that's what this video is all about. How can I best uh, upconvert my images? So I'm doing comparison tests today. So I'm taking Gigapixel, I'm taking uh, Denoise AI, and I'm taking Sharpen AI. And I'm running tests on three different images. And then I'm going to let you be able to download those images and then compare the results. And that way... You know, if you don't have JPEG to RAW AI or you have a, if you're running Big Sur and you can't use your JPEG to RAW AI, well, maybe you're okay because I believe that these programs can really do the job for you. And I don't even know if uh, Topaz will even update uh, JPEG to RAW AI anymore. They haven't done it yet, so I'm beginning to wonder. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section below. Now, every image that I run through these tests today, I'm going to give you a link to my Google Drive where you can download all my results and do the pixel peeping and try it out on your own. And I hope that this uh, video will give you some uh, good information and maybe it'll liberate you and, you know, you may say, well, I don't have JPEG to raw AI, but I can go ahead and use one of these uh, pieces of software. And... Take a look at the test results and see which one you think did the best, or are they all pretty comparable? But you let me know, and let me know in the comments section below what you think. I really appreciate it. Now, let's go on with the test. I'm going to show you how I did the test for all of the images, and that'll even help you with a workflow as to how to do this. So, let's get started. Stop the presses. Wait, there's one last thing I forgot to show you. This is what you're going to come to when you go to the Google Drive. You're going to see these three file folders, Denoise AI, Gigapixel AI, and Sharpen AI. So open those up and inside those you're going to find the original JPEGs as well as you're going to find an LZW compression TIFF file with a no compression TIFF file. Now I wanted you to see all the tests and one thing I found out that was kind of interesting 
Whenever I use LZW compression, you would think the file size would get smaller. It actually gets larger than if you didn't use any compression on it. And I don't really see a difference between using LZW compression and no compression. I would think no compression would be the way to go. And it's actually a smaller file. So I thought that was interesting. So check that out too. So you're going to have lots of pixel peeping to do. And I think you'll be able to come up with the best solution for yourself. So now we can get started. Now I'm starting out in Denoise AI and here's my recommendation for this uh, up conversion process. Use standard, I think you're gonna be better off. Now you can go ahead and experiment and try some of the other AI models, but I think standard is gonna do the best for you. Settings, I just choose auto for the settings uh, and let it do everything for you. And if you're gonna batch process a bunch of images at once, make sure you have select all checked here. Now this is important here, take a note down here when, uh, th when you have a select all checked and you're running the same processing on all the images, notice you have this little uh, information here, must preview image to determine auto setting. So just click on that image, the other image comes up, it'll run its auto setting on it. And then after that's done, click on your next image and run the auto setting on that. You know, and you can check around your image, make sure everything's okay. I've already done all that kind of stuff, so everything is good. All I need to do is batch process these out. So all I do is come here and click on save three images. Now, what you want to do on image format is change it. You can even do DNG if you want. I don't really recommend that. Just use TIFF. It's a lossless uh, format. Uh, I, I made my test with LZW compression. Like I said earlier, I didn't see a difference. So I'm just going to use no compression. You actually get a smaller file when you use no compression. I recommend 16 bits. So you get the highest amount of resolution. That's kind of important. Um, file name, I just do auto. Let it generate its own file name. It lets me know, you know about what denoise method I use. So that's kind of nice. And as far as color profile, I do recommend that you change this to pro photo if you're going to be editing your images because it's a it's a bigger color space and it makes sense. And I'm just putting these back to the source directory. All I need to do now is click on start and then they go through and it's really quick now with this new update on denoise and in a few seconds here it's done so it took like uh basically under 10 seconds for three of these images so that's nice and remember you'll be able to go and download that uh all these files in my on you know from my google drive and you can check all the comparisons out for yourself and next we move to Sharpen AI. Now remember, we're doing up conversions from JPEG to TIFF, okay? So here's what I'm using. I'm not using motion blur, out of focus. I'm using too soft, which if I hover over the image quality, it tells us, uh, where's it say, determines AI model, um, too soft for general sharpening. So I'm just using general sharpening here. If you have an image that has like a, a, a you know, like a sharpness issue, like motion blur problems or too soft, meaning like too soft, more than this too soft can fix it, like really out of focus, then you might want to use out of focus. But for most cases, you're going to use too soft, okay? I'm going to leave this on normal. I'm going to have my settings on auto. I'm not going to add any grain. And that same deal, I'm going to check on select all so they all get the same adjustments. And don't forget down here, just like Denoise, it says image must be loaded to determine settings. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and load up the next image. And yes, it determines the settings. That's good. And then for the last image, I'm going to do the same thing. All right. So they're all ready to go. All I need to do now is save three images. And the same thing here, uh, image format, I'm going to change it to TIFF. Uh, compression LZW. Remember, I ran my comparison test with LZs up. LZW and no compression whatsoever. And we're going to use no compression because again, it's a smaller file for some weird reason. And I just think it's better. You're better off with it. I don't really see a difference between the two, to be honest with you. So I'd rather have a smaller file size, bit depth, 16 bit file name is auto. It'll append the blur type that you've added and uh, save directory will be the source and color profile. I like to use pro photo. I mean, you could use a, uh, Adobe RGB as well too, but I, I just always use Profoto and that's what I recommend. But either one will be fine. And now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, click start and let it do its processing. And it's really quick here too. We'll see. I think Sharpen might be slightly longer. Man, they're very, now they're very close. Okay, there's three images. 
Okay, so those are done. And now on to Gigapixel. And now we're in Gigapixel. We're not upsizing this unless you want to upsize it to like a different size, like a 2X, 4X, or 6X. If you want to keep it the same size, come over here where you have the dot, 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 X and leave this on one, all right? Just leave this on one. It won't upsize. It'll keep it the same size. It'll just convert it over to a TIFF or a DNG or whatever you want. I'm just using the standard AI model. You could try the different models, but I recommend standard settings, auto, and I don't do anything with reduced color bleed or face refinement, okay? Unless you have some smaller, a group of, you know, people in your image and their faces are smaller, you may want to turn the face refinement on. But other than that, leave those, everything off. And make sure you have select all checked here if you're batch processing, obviously. And this doesn't give us any information to like click on these to, you know, have the uh, auto settings adjust for each image but uh, however you should do that it doesn't say it but you should do it and maybe on a on a new update uh, topaz will add that because i'll note you'll notice here on this first image take notice of the settings suppress noise is at 80 and the auto and remove blur is at 80 when i click on the second image uh, suppress noise is at 20 and remove blur is at 100 on that one okay and i'm just using the auto settings because it does a great job and I'm going to go to the last one and suppress noise is 40 and remove blur is 80. So they're different for all of them. So I recommend that you click on each one of these images before you output them. And now when you're ready to output them after you've chose the, the scale size to times one and you're on standard and your settings are on auto, click save three images and the same deal here. Change the format. I'm going to do TIFF again. Uh, I'm going to use... Um, no compression and 16 bit depth. Now you have your choice between 16 and eight. 16 is a larger bit depth, highly recommend it. Cause remember we're trying to do more aggressive edits on our images, okay? And then uh, file name, I'm leaving it on auto. And as far as color profile, I'm going to use my favorite, which is Pro Photo. but use the one you like. If you like Adobe RGB better then use that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click start. And we'll watch the process here. And let's see how long this takes. This might be a little longer. I think it is. So the first image was six seconds. Yeah, it was like twice the time. So if you're wanting the fastest workflow, you may want to use uh, Denoise or Sharpen. And I'm thinking I'm going to use Denoise for mine. That After my results, you know. But you do the pixel peeping yourself and you see. But stay tuned. We're going to do a little bit of pixel peeping as soon as... I'm done right now. As promised, here's a little bit of pixel peeping. Now I have my images. The JPEG will be on the top. The next one down is the uh, no compression. And the next one under that is LZW compression for all three images. Now I'm only going to show you Denoise AI because that's the, that's the uh, software I'm, gonna, I'm going to be using. And I'll be honest with you, I think they all do about the same job. But Denoise is maybe, uh, Denoise and Sharpen AI are about the same speed to process. Gigapixel's slightly longer, but it's not that big of a deal either. So whatever software you have, I think you're going to be happy with. Uh, do you need JPEG to raw AI? Probably not, because these programs have gotten so good. Um, and again, will they update JPEG to raw AI? I don't know. But anyway, this is our workaround. So here's the JPEG image. Now take a look at the no compression image right there. It's definitely sharper and it does look better, but download the images so you can do your own pixel peeping because sometimes on the computer, on a video, you can't really tell, uh, but you'll see them. I'd rather you download them and really check them out yourself. Do yourself a favor and do that. I think it'll be good, a good uh, experience and you'll really know the answer. All right, and now let me go to the LZW. I don't see a difference between the LZW, I'll be honest with you, and the no compression. And the no compression is actually a smaller file, believe it or not. And now let's go to the next image, uh, this bird. And you can see some artifacts in here. And let's go, that's the JPEG. Here is the um, denoise. Uh, looks a little better. The artifacts are maybe slightly less. I don't know. Let's go back to the original. Man, it looks, it, they're very close, to be honest with you. But even though they look pretty much the same, you can really edit them because, like I said, now they're in TIFF format. They're 16-bit. They used to be 8-bit. 
They're in Pro Photo Color Space or Adobe RGB, whichever you use. And this is the LZW compression. So again, I don't see a difference. And here's my last image of this puffin. Aren't these cool birds? This is the JPEG. And here is the no compression. And here is the LZW. And again, you can't really tell unless you download these to really see the difference between them. And I chose these images because they have these nice soft backgrounds. So you can really see if there's any artifacts or whatever. So go ahead and download those. Well, there you go, everyone. I hope this was a valuable tutorial for you today or a comparison test. And like I said, download those uh, images so you can really check it out for yourself. So if you need to upconvert images from JPEG to RAW or TIFF, whatever, any one of these pieces of software, in my opinion, will work wonderfully for you. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified.